Hi and welcome to this tutorial. Now this guy called the Matador uh, wrote me an email regarding how to animate uh, the rotors of the helicopter. Um, I'm not a typical animator type and uh, that also perhaps shows on my website that I don't have a lot of animation down there but uh, nevertheless I thought uh, I'll try and see if I can help this guy to figure out how to do this. And after uh, some uh, research, I um, figured out that it's like Lyrif doesn't really have a, a velocity parameter by itself when controlling animation. Uh, there's a lot of possibilities using uh, stuff like uh, expressions and so on, but it seems like uh, there's no really velocity uh, factor inside Lyrif normally. But you can do that, get that by uh, using a third-part plugin. So uh, I was thinking, uh, if I was looking at a movie or something, what would actually happen with a helicopter? Well, it would most often it will either be running, or it would either be spinning up and then running by the speed it would be running by. So uh, why do I need to? make some third-party plugins to use for this, uh, I thought. So, I thought uh, I would show you my point of view here in uh, doing some stuff uh, with the helicopter here and spinning up and getting the right rotor speed and showing how to set a motion blur and so on to see how this will look. I got a basic chopper here. I'll hit render here and you see we have a plain chopper. I'll then pip this scene up a bit. Let's give it a big of bit of backdrop here. I'll just put some texture environment here. Let's say we'll start by doing a gradient for the background in the pinch here. Let's put some dark blue not in the purple range and I'll put some lighter blue I'll just turn on the VPR here so we can see I'll drag this out of the way and I can see here uh, when I start to get a little tone here in the sky, you see. Like this. I would like this to be a little more blue as well. So we got a nice tone here in the background. Let's add up some uh, clouds to that. Turbulence here. Let's say we want some contrast here to give it an edge give it a bit of detail here and see we got some clouds, I want the clouds to be a little bit more 3D so I copy this and I paste it in again and I tone these down a bit in the color and then I rotate these a bit and as you see now I'm starting to get a little bit of depth on the clouds make this one a bit brighter here see we're getting uh, some somewhat more depth here we can oops also to that we can add a procedure again and just put some let's say fractal noise here and we'll make this very small say 0 0.5 0 0.5 0 0.5 It's a little bit too much.
like this. I get some small and I'll just turn it down a bit. My first clouds I'm going to make a little bit brighter. So, it's starting to look pretty decent here. So, let's just close this down and we got the chopper here. Now, uh, I've been doing a bit of research here on helicopters and uh, the rotor blades here, normally, they, uh, of course, they accelerate with the, with the when the helicopter is starting, but the, the max speed for this is around 500 RPMs. That's rounds per minute. So, we have to calculate this and say, well, how much do we have here? Um, I live in Denmark, we have 25 frames per second, so if I need one minute uh, of frames, I have 1500 frames. So I have something to calculate. <coughs> Sorry about that. Um, so, having said this, um, I would like, of course, to go uh, like a standard speed, with, with which will be around 400 rounds per minute. And um, if we bring up the calculator here, and say we have 400 rounds times 360, that's uh, 144,000 uh, uh, degrees we need to rotate this within the this one minute. And if I divide that to say the 60 seconds, so we are back at the 25 frames, so in 25 frames we need the rotor to be rotating uh, 2400 uh, degrees. So, I could just set this to go to frame 25 here and set a key and I can go to the graph editor here for the heading of the rotor. I could select this and I could say 2400 and this is, of course, going to be a little bit big, so I'm going to zoom down here, so we can see. I'll move it in a bit here, and so on here. And I can take this, and I could say, repeat, and it would continue rotating, as you see here and it will be rotating at the correct speed. But in this case I would like to see um, the chopper spinning up here, so if I say I had like 30 seconds for the rotors to spin up, I would take this 2400, which is 1 second, and t I will multiply that by uh, 30 to get the 30 seconds, and I have 7200. Um, or 72,000, sorry, uh, RPMs or uh, degrees of rotation. So, 7,200. 22,000, sorry. Um, I'll then go into graph editor again and hit the rotor. And 30 seconds, that is uh, 750 frames. So, I'll move this key to 750. And I'll change the value here to the value of the speed, which is the max speed. And I'll need to zoom in again here. So, I want this to continue, but I want it to speed up. But I can't use repeat then, because if I want this to speed up, right now it's just going constant speed. If I want it to speed this up, I want I need this to be curved here. But if I curve this, then I would not get the correct here, because it would slow down and speed up, slow down and speed up. So I need to change this to be linear, and I'm going to select this here, and I'm going to set to be sheer spline instead. I'm then going to rotate this up again, and I know when I hit 1500 here, I have to be around um, 
around the four, uh, 144,000 degrees as we calculated in the beginning of the video. So I can check here and I can check my angle here, hit off or rotate, and I can see I'm a little bit too high here, so I need this to be angled down a bit. And I accidentally hit a key, I see. Right here. I'll move this down. And I'll take this one here and drag it out to get the slow speed up. And here we need to end. Around the 100, uh, 144,000 uh, degrees of rotation. So this way here, it will start slowly and build up and build up and build up and build up. And when it gets around here, it will continue continuously at the correct speed, which will be 400 rounds per minute. So, if we look at this. You'll see if I press play here, we will speed up and speed up and speed up, faster and faster, and sometime it will start to look like it's going backwards and stuff, which is normal. It's not really doing that, it's just a visual effect. Uh, but you'll see uh, stuff happening when we start to add motion blends on. So this is pretty good. We have a nice speed up and so on. Uh, I then need to get the back rotor here following this one. But the back rotor is a lot smaller and it's spinning a lot faster. In fact, this is spinning around six times the speed of this one here. So I'm going to put uh, an expression here on the back rotor. And I'm dragging this in. I'm going to use the pitch angle here and I'm going to use I'm going to call the top rotor here so I'm going to say like this and Apache L which is the object and I'm going to call the rotor and this has to be capital if it's capital in the, in the name you have to be exactly the same and we're going to hit period and rotation period H which is the heading and we're going to make a space and asterisk and 6 this is going to be the speed of the rotation here of the heading times 6 I can see test expression and I get expression OK continue and you should now see this is going to work and it's going to speed up and it's going to speed up and it's going to speed up until it's about 750 frames and it will be at its max speed so now we are missing the motion blur so if you render now you just see nothing because you have no motion blur on the rotor so I'm going to camera and I'm going to set this anti license to say 5 and I'm going to set adaptive sampling to 0 0.04 and I'm going to set our sampling to 6 like this and we are going down to motion blur here and set photo real motion blur and I'm just set this to say five passes here to get it nice and smooth. So, if I render now, you're going to see some really nice blade rotation here. It's just going to take a few seconds here. Of course, if I have 
had uh, less initializing and so on, but again that will affect the quality, this is just to show. And you see here I have a nice circle here of the blade spinning and it's all looking very good. And of course also if I went down to the slow speed area here and we did a render of that. you would see it would look a lot different. We'll just take a few frames here to check to check. And there you go. This is for a slow speed. If we go a little faster, we render again. And I would then set this up to say, like say, uh, I had a few scenes to render and I could uh, then separate the scene into this one would be where the chopper would ex accelerate and start up and then uh, perhaps take off and then I would cut to a new scene like you do in every movie where you see the chopper at full speed and you will have that uh, flying away to the distance or somewhat and as you see here it's going to be faster and faster and faster uh, you could if you want here in the slow speed you could rise here the length of the motion blur if you want the circle to be visible earlier you'll see we'll get a bigger circle now we can compare the two frames And it's rendering and rendering. And there we go. You see, you've got a real nice look now. So, <coughs> balance the motion bar a bit uh, according to the RPM you want to see. And uh, I hope this can help you to start uh, getting some uh, chopper's flying around. Have fun.